Think a lot of people also overlook some of the capabilities of Excel's date and time system. It's a long story to talk about and where the date system came from and its origins and how it all works, but ultimately it boils down to this. A date entry in Excel, if you follow certain basic rules, actually stores a value in a cell. And although you don't necessarily need to see that value, it is the core behind how the entire date system works. And if you do enter dates properly in Excel, you can later figure out what day of the week it is. You can subtract dates. You can look into the future, into the past. You can indicate length. And some of the things you're seeing on the screen here in column B suggest things we do with dates. In column D are a few dates and a couple points here about date entry too. If you're entering dates that are in the first decade of the 20th century, first of all, when you type in a month, most people don't type in 08 for August. They'll simply type in 8. That's fine. And always use slash or hyphen that optimizes your use of the system, whatever is more convenient for you. I think slash is more common. Month slash day. And if it's a one digit day, just the simple day, August 3rd slash. If this is a 2007, put in a seven. That's it. Good enough. The other thing you should do when you're putting in dates, and you might already be seeing something in column D that looks a little bit strange. Make the column wider. I'm doing this here on purpose now. Of course, something does look a little bit different, and you probably know, as most of us do, that there is no November 31st. You wouldn't have seen that obvious typo if the column was as narrow as it had been. And so just at least temporarily, and you can later adjust it for date columns, make it wider than is necessary in impossible dates like this, 2 slash 29. Now, it doesn't make any difference whether you put in the four-digit year or not. You can't fool Excel. There is no such date, so it becomes left aligned. Now, you will defeat the purpose of this indicator if you happen to have the column right aligned. Now, just the label is here, but if we make the entire column right aligned, you're not going to see those typos, and you might have some bad dates in there, so don't keep it right aligned. And so, make the data entry as you wish. There's some other issues here that might surprise you regarding dates and times in Excel. Here are two dates a year apart, where actually they're not a year apart, are they? They're a century apart practically. But it does bring up an issue here, and you see the numbers over here, 30 through 99, I put them there for reference. Any entry for a year that you might make, and if you were typing this, and say you were dealing with issues regarding ages of people, maybe this is a social security office, or it's an office of a retirement community, you've got the ages of people possibly. 12 slash 3 slash 30, what happens? It becomes 1930. What if you type 12 slash 3 slash 29? You're thinking of a person who's exactly a year older than the other person and you hit enter, what happens? It's 2029. Microsoft has decided and they made this decision 10 years ago and they will probably have to change the default entries in another five years or so. Any time you put a year in a date entry that's 0 through 29, it's in the 21st century. If the year is 30 through 99, it's in the previous century, 20th century. Now, if you use four-digit displays, you will see the result immediately and adjust it. And of course, the solution here is to type a four-digit year when necessary. But if you do have these displayed, for example, using format cells with a two-digit year, you are not going to see this difference. And here and there, that's going to cause some problems down the road as it might here. That's 1930. This is 2029. You can see that in the formula bar. And now some basic issues here with date math. In cell B3, we want to know how much time has elapsed between these two dates. How many days? This might have to do with a person's tenure within an organization. It might have to do with that copying machine down the hall. It just went on the blank. How long have we had it? Let's subtract these. The unit of measure in the date time system is 1 equals a day. Equal higher date, the later date, minus the earlier date. Now, what you don't necessarily know, and I mentioned the fact that Excel is actually storing values here. The entire Excel date system begins January 1st, 1900, goes all the way until the year 10,000. And whether you know it or not, when you're entering a date, you're actually putting in a value to write it's a proper date. If you want a quick look at this and it's not critical, you might click the comma button. It's in the number group on the home tab. And you would see this value, and of course there's another value for this, and Excel is just subtracting the values there. Now we can look into the future just as easily. And by the way, I meant to point out here too, 
In Excel 2003 and in all prior versions, when you subtract dates, the answer comes up as a date and it really is unsettling and you have to kind of know what you're doing and then turn it into a value. But in 2007, they have corrected that so that works nicely. Sometimes you have to look into the future. When is 1500 days from the date of this installation? Equal that date plus the 1500. Remember, a unit of time is a day. 1500 days into the future, there it is. And certainly looking into the past, the same general idea. 90 days ago, if this were today's date, or the date in question, equal this minus 90. There you go. 90 days ago. Not only can Excel handle dates, but it also handles times. And you want to be thinking of time as that portion of a day. And here, too, there's a value being stored. Libit past 8 a.m., that's roughly a third of a day. And again, you don't usually need to know this or think too much about it because Excel can handle time math as well. A quick look here just with the comma button, it's 0.34 days. So a day is broken into hours. And if we did this by math, for exactly 8 o'clock, that would be 0.3333, etc. Noon would be 0.5, and so on. And usually you don't worry about that. Two different entries here. Now, how do you make time entries? If you simply put in a time, if it's below 12 hours, it's automatically a.m. So an entry like 8 colon 13 is automatically whether you see the a.m. or not, it's an a.m. entry. If you type 4 colon 41 and do nothing else, that's 4.41 a.m. And you've got two options there. 4 colon 41 space P. Enter. Good enough. It puts it in 24 hour style. And of course, you could have typed it as 16 colon 41 if you're familiar with that style of reference. So I'm putting in those kinds of times. Think out what's most convenient to you. If we subtract times, we sometimes get a slightly funny variation on this equal a later time. That's this minus this eight hours and 28 minutes. Because this cell was previously formatted, it looks like this. Sometimes you'll see AM and PM in the answer and it throws you a little bit. And so you'll have to reformat that or make it look proper if it doesn't. Now the question also comes up. What do you, if it maybe has something to do with working time and you say, well, I took 45 minutes for lunch. You want to subtract 45 minutes from this. Well, one thought that might run through your head is, well, you know, an hour is 1 24th of a day. If we subtracted 1 24th from this, it would be an hour less. We're talking about 45 minutes, and that's three quarters of 1 24th. I mean, you could do the math. It's 1 30 seconds. So on. that's a little bit clunky and cumbersome and kind of geeky too. But surprisingly, you can actually subtract a time this way. Double quote, and then 0 colon 45 double quote, 45 minutes less, 7 hours and 43 minutes we're talking about here. And you can also do time at math across multiple days. Now you can't make it the entry like this, but if you look at these for a second or two, you'll see if it had been on the ending date here, 6 p.m., that would be exactly two days or 48 hours. So it's three hours short of that. It should be 45 hours. I'm going to move these over here for reference. How do we put an entry like this in here? And you can do it in one cell. 11 slash 18 is the date, slash 9, we could type it that way even, space, and at 6 p.m., how about 6 space p, enter. Notice that it does go in in a standard kind of way, and that is a value being stored there. Same idea here, 11 slash 20 slash 9 space, 3 p.m., 3 space p, enter. And when we subtract the two here, equal... The later time minus the earlier time, we're hoping to see 45 hours, but we get a strange number. So immediately, let's jump right into format cells. And of course, we would want to display this as a time, and this would be the choice to make. We don't want to see AM, PM here because we're subtracting times, and yet that's not right either. So what's going on here? From time to time, when you're dealing with time math, either addition or subtraction, you need to go to a special format. And unfortunately, Excel doesn't tell you what to do here. In the time category in the list of examples here, the one with the 37 is the one that we need to use, though. It's certainly not obvious. And since we don't care about seconds here, the other fix you would probably want to make here is to jump over into custom once you've selected this. 
and keep only the hours and the minutes in the display here. The hours within brackets means that it will handle hours over 24. If you look at that number again, that's 24 hours short of what it needs to be. Click OK, and finally we get our answer there. So you can tabulate times across multiple days. And I think you can see there's just a wealth of opportunity here for any situation where you've got dates and times and you're trying to measure the various kinds of differences that occur with these kinds of entries.